Welcome back, Warrior Fam. Yay! We are so excited that you're back with us this week, every week, but this week especially. We have just a really exciting end of the year, like special for y'all today. Yeah. Yeah. And this was Abby's idea. And of course, she's a genius. <laughs> and so I was like, uh, hell yes, we're doing this. And um, yeah, I'm so excited to just like dive into why we chose to have a special and just remember all of our incredible guests yeah, and some of the, some of the favorite responses we've gotten from them for, um, more of our, like every guest interview questions that we ask, like there are the questions that we ask that are special for each guest. And then the questions mm-hmm. that we give to everyone. And so, um, yeah, I just love to love, love this idea, Abby. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, first of all, this episode will be airing on New Year's Eve and, you know, it felt kind of like we should do something. I mean, I don't know why no one's like podcasters on New Year's Eve. You need to do something extra special. (laughs) Right. But I just felt like, you know, I really appreciate our community And Mm -hmm. I really, you know, you and I have gotten, I mean, I'm going to speak for both of us, but you correct me if I'm wrong. We've gotten pretty comfortable talking about anxiety and talking about our vulnerabilities and talking about, you know, our brave points and everything. Um, Mm -hmm. But, but along with that, like our guests, we don't know how often they actually talk about it. And they've all been so incredibly brave to join us and share their story. And, and I thought that, you know, what better way to start the new year than, you know, really connecting with some people that we all share at least one thing in common, navigating (laughs) anxiety. Um, and just like the beautiful wisdom that they've shared with us and the stories and the fun, because we've definitely, even though anxiety is real and it's challenging, we've shared a lot of fun with, with our guests too. Yes, absolutely. And, um, I also want to just express how deeply grateful I feel for all the incredible people that have come on to chat with us. Because as you said, it is really brave and you and I have been brave. I want to say too, in this process and coming into podcasting with zero experience. (laughs) And yes, we've listened to, we listen to podcasts pretty, pretty regularly, or at least I know I do. And that doesn't mean you know how to do one. And so it's been scary and wild and fun for, for me. And I know, again, speaking for both of us, we've talked about it many times on and off the air. Um, but having those people be like, you know what, if Abby and Margo can do it, I can do it too. And that feels really awesome too. hearing from folks saying, thank you for this space means the world to me. I know I'm sure it means the world to you. Um, and that just makes me feel so grateful. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you said like how you and I like just dove right into podcasting, um, without knowing what we're doing, like there's, I still feel that way. Right. I still, I still feel like sometimes like, what are we doing? Right. (laughs) And I'm, I'm being serious, but, but I just, I remind myself and, and this is really true is that, um, one, I'm really grateful for the connection and friendship you and I have developed. And I'm really grateful for um, the community we've connected with. And um, the, the reality is like this pandemic's been hard for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons, myself included. And um, this podcast has been like a, a shining light for me during mm. it. And, and the ability to connect with you weekly or biweekly and also with all of our guests has just really like been like my North Star. Um, and so even though we still have no idea what we're doing, (laughs) (laughs) um, it just, it, it brightens my heart. And I know we've heard from other people that this brightens their, their lives up too. And, and so, um, I just thought it would be really nice to just share all of our brave and amazing guests as we enter into the new year. Yes. And as we welcome new brave and amazing guests yes. to our little space, or, you know, I need to stop using the word little, right. That's just like a knee jerk thing. Mm. This is big. It is a big deal. What we're doing. I, I and I want to start honoring that more, um, and saying it more out loud just cause, yeah. and I, I want this to hopefully drive home to all the warriors out there who have anxiety about doing things that feel out of their comfort zone. Like we're doing with this podcast and doing things that um, require leap of faith and mm-hmm. require, um, 
acts of bravery within your own heart. And so, uh, yeah, you don't have to know everything about something before you dive into it, especially when what you're trying to do is just connect with other people. And I agree, Abby, I think that this pandemic has been unique in that even us anxiety warriors who've been living with this for our whole lives, some of us, um, definitely felt anxiety in new ways yeah. during this pandemic. So yeah. we are so grateful again, that you've been here with us journeying, journeying with us every single week. And, uh, we hope you love it. We hope yeah. you love it. And we hope you'll keep journeying with us. All right. So what to expect in this special, this new year's Eve special, we are going to be, um, re-listening to some of the incredible responses that we received from our warrior interviewees. Uh, from the following questions, we always ask, what does being an anxiety warrior mean to you? And we always ask if you could go back in time and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? And so, um, you know, in this episode, we hope that you enjoy listening to all of these wonderful tips and bits of advice and just incredible insights for all of us warriors to hold on to. Uh, about being an anxiety warrior and about offering our younger selves a loving bit of uh, advice. Yeah. And then our favorite at the end, (laughs) we're going to be re-listening to um, a question from every interview uh, that was from our lightning round. Mm -hmm. So a lightning round question from each interview and each one will be completely different, but we have, I will say, we've had a lot of themed style, (laughs) stylized lightning round questions that many of them, while not identical to previous interviews, lightning round questions, they have like similar themes or notes to them. We we Mm -hmm. like people to sing. We like sound clearly lots of improv style kind of questions. So we really, really hope that you all, um, enjoy reflecting as we have on all the incredible guests we've had that we've been blessed to have on this show. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. Enjoy. Here's the show. What does being an anxiety warrior mean to you? It means strong back, open heart, going towards, we talked about before, going towards the anxiety, not around it. Being an anxiety warrior is facing your anxiety for me. It's acknowledging that it's there it's talking about anxiety and not being ashamed that 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 it's part of you so for me so having this conversation and being open that's being an anxiety warrior and Mm -hmm. you know I think for so long it was a shameful thing for me that I didn't really understand and so now just being like yes I have anxiety and it that it, that's it. There's no judgment. There's nothing that it's just, that's just what it is. So I think just being open and talking about it is being an anxiety warrior. It's learning how to live with your anxiety, you know, kind of what it like make friends, like make friends with your anxiety, you know, like what we tell the kids when we teach, like make friends with these big feelings, you know? Yeah. So I think being an anxiety warrior is learning how to make friends with your anxiety, how to, And once we make friends with it, then sometimes we can make it get a little bit smaller. You know, basically I always think what I'm teaching the kids is just what I need. So it's, you know, um, yeah, it's making it get a little bit smaller. And so it doesn't become crippling. Yeah. So it doesn't become crippling and it doesn't become debilitating. You know, we make friends with it. So it can become a little bit smaller and we can talk to it or talk ourselves out of it, um, and live fulfilling lives. Being an anxiety warrior means whenever a situation comes up that triggers anxiety within me, uh, being able to recognize it's anxiety and it's not me. Mm. I think just being able to start there. Um, I have a because I I have a choice from there to recognize when it's not me. I can kind of cave into it and like, uh, here we go, nachos and guacamole. That's all right too. Or I can sit down and meditate on it or, you know, do something to really try to get through it in a certain way. Or I could just let it um, take me for that day and come back another day. But really acknowledging, all right, that wasn't me that, you know, got taken out or whatever that fell off, whatever I was trying to do. 
that was just my anxiety. And tomorrow I got some, I got some for you tomorrow. This anxiety. Um, when I first heard that term, it kind of it felt like a community, um, and it felt uh, anxiety is always sort of associated, um, and it's I hate when it is with someone who's just who is weaker, quote unquote, which I really don't like. So the idea that you're a warrior is you're strong and you're fighting. Um, so being an anxiety warrior, it's sort of like uh, wearing your quote unquote weakness on your sleeve and wearing it as a strength and mm. as a badge. So that's what I sort of thought of as an anxiety warrior. So I thought, hey, I can be like that too. So that's what I associate anxiety warrior with. Being an anxiety warrior means that I've learned how to navigate my anxiety with compassion, that um, I've accepted it, and that I've, uh, I understand that it's a natural part of my human experience. Mm. So to me, I would say it means facing my triggers and not letting my anxiety stop me from enjoying my life and just having fun. I would say to me, it's sort of twofold. One is that, um, similar to what Bailey said, is recognizing my anxiety and not letting it control me, not letting it dictate what I do and don't do. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a big piece. And then the, the other big piece for me is uh, is making, you know, getting out there and talking about it and educating people about anxiety and mental health and normalizing it for Mm. for everyone. Um, and, and just making it part of the conversation, making it part of the conversation. Oh, wow. Being an advocate, you know, Mm -hmm. um, all the things that I've learned, I've learned in my life, you know, everything that we go through is not necessarily about you. It's to help another person, right? I've had so many women come up to me or say to me or even DM me like, oh my God, like what you said, like, I feel that, or I've gone through that, or, you know, your light, how do you get that light? Or, you know, how can I do this? Or, you know, so I just truly believe that everything that I have gone through has prepared me to help people, you know, to, to let people know that you can't, you can make it, you can do anything that you put your mind to, you know, don't allow circumstances or things around you to, to dictate who you are or who you can be, you know, so I'm a big advocate for you can be the best version of yourself. You just have to do the work, you know, this is not easy. <laughs> no. You know, this work that we all do is not easy. We make it look easy, but it's not easy. And even in the process of me helping others, I'm still helping myself. I'm still I'm still healing. I'm still growing. I'm still you know, trying to figure this thing out, you know, but we can do it together. I, I'm thinking like, you know, like there's a fierceness to it. Mm-hmm. And I don't really want to be fierce about it. I want to sit with it. I want, I want to walk with it. So it's not so much like an anxiety warrior for me. It's more of like a kinship. Like it's part of my community. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to welcome it in. Because the more I welcome it in, mm-hmm. I think the friendlier it will be with me. So I think that's what it means to me to be an anxiety warrior. It's more of the fact of like opening up the community that you live with, mm-hmm. having it sit with you, walking with it, and just like fully accepting it. It means being someone who turns their lessons into their blessings. I love that that name, that title also, just to let you know. It just makes you feel so strong and powerful. You can say, I'm an anxiety warrior. I can push through this and it still be a great moment. And so mm-hmm. me being an anxiety warrior, it just lets people know okay, she may be a little nervous or shy, but she's going to get through this without, you know, any problems. So that's 
when I hear that word and I saw the title, I was like, oh, I love your title. <laughs> I'm like, that is so perfect. So that's what it just made me feel powerful. Just saying it, you know, I'm an anxiety warrior, you know, yes. and you feel like you want to stick your chest out, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, whenever you guys told me what the podcast title was going to be, I thought it was really awesome. <laughs> I think, I think the, the most powerful part about it is that it's really active um, and it just feels, I don't know, like there's something you can do about anxiety and it's also something that you can become over time, right? Like it's a process, it's not a thousand dollar certificate. <laughs> um, it, it's something that you, it, it's a personal journey. I think it would just be like getting up doing what you got to do and doing it the best you can do it. Hmm. I feel like really that's, especially these days, that's like really all you can ask for is like, did I get up? Did I do what I had to do? Did I do it in a, the best way I could have done it? Like, you know, sure. Some days we don't perform as well, but like, did you give it your all? And I mean, did you keep the voices below? Yeah. Keep it, yeah. keep them at bay. Oh, ladies, I was so attracted to the name that you chose because I like said it over and over to myself. I'm like, this is so brilliant <laughs> to me of, of uh, I'm, uh, I'm the boss of this. And I, I feel like that's an attitude you need to have. I don't want to let anxiety win. Like, it, 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 to me, it screams that I'm the boss of it or I'm trying, and I need to be because I do not like, I do not like anxiety. But like the name itself just was, was empowering. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it is, it's, it's being the manager, the boss, the CEO of, of your, of your stuff. That no matter what episode is thrown your way, you got a shield and armor ready to go <laughs> mm. to, to handle it with grit, but also some grace. Um, you know, I've, I think I've danced around it a lot in these answers. And um, it's, uh, it's my idea that I have confidence that whatever is thrown at me, I'm going to be, I'm going to live through it. Yeah. I'm going to get to the other side. I'm not going to disappear, you know, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, that all, sometimes you get overwhelmed by like big, big tasks, but anxiety, like to me, anxiety where I know that all that really is, is a bunch of little tasks that I'm going to be able to look at and make the judgment on and get through and make the best possible decision in the moment. And that I'm actually pretty good at decisions. And at the end of the day, I will have ended up where I want to be. Uh, so not, not to focus on the result, but focus on the process that gets me to the result. Mm. And that has helped me a lot with anxiety. That's why I feel like I'm an anxiety warrior because I do that all the time and it's very successful. If you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? I would say that it's, it's okay. It's, um, is normal for you and um, just breathe through it and it's going to be okay. Mm. Like, I don't want the younger me to ever feel like I'm not normal or that, that's, like you said, something's wrong with me or, you know, because even when, as a kid, people were like, why are you so shy? Why are you so quiet? Mm. You know, you thinking like, I'm just a shy, quiet person. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, right? Yes. <laughs> so I would tell my younger self, keep being who you are. It's okay. And mm. you can be a quiet person. Yeah, I think I would say that you're not really meant to fit in. And the more you try, the more you'll actually lose yourself. Mm. <laughs> um, and maybe that takes, it'll just take a lot of your energy and it, that it's, it's really not worth it your experience is valid. Mm, mm. Your emotions are normal. It is normal to not feel 
good all of the time. Mm. It's normal to feel uncomfortable. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. Um, I would just want to validate my experience. Because I think that's, that's, that's it. That, that's what was missing, you know? We don't have to pretend that it's not happening, you know? We don't have to, we can have some tools to manage it, mm-hmm. but it's mm-hmm. totally, totally valid to feel, to feel that way right. and to feel any way for that matter. I would tell her that her opinion matters just as much as anybody else's Mm. and to trust in her own opinion just as much as she trusts in others and to focus on making herself happy first and foremost yes keep going keep going just keep walking keep moving keep going it all makes sense um the stuff that you're going through right now it'll pass the Mm. feelings and stuff they heavy they big right now just just keep going, keep moving. Um, I, I think, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I go back in my past and tell myself that because otherwise I, because sometimes I don't, I don't know how I got through stuff. So I'm like, man, maybe my future self came back and just <laughs> left that note or, you know, <laughs> sent that message or just whispered something in my ear, opened the door or whatever, something for me, but definitely would tell my uh, younger self, keep going and, um, and to start wearing smaller jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get an English degree. <laughs> Whoa, so specific. <laughs> I thought about that. I knew this question was coming. I thought about it long and hard. Like, what would I tell myself? Obsessed. Right. You could have mm-hmm. done. You could have done what you're doing now earlier. Could have. Could have saved a decade. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, let's see what else. I mean, maybe I would have started being more positive and, you know, less obnoxious younger. So that would have helped too. To not care so much what other people think of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't get caught up in the drama of what these people think because you don't even talk to them anymore. <laughs> 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 Who cares so about all these, all these people and these, and these bullies, you know, I used to be, um, I was bullied as a little girl too, because I'm barely five foot standing at almost 33 years old. So imagine how tall I was when I was like four years old. Oh my God, I was a peanut. So I was picked on a lot for my size as a little girl. And oh, like, I just so got intertwined, like entwined in that. Mm-hmm. But it's also developmentally, you know, when you're younger, you need to identify what other people think of you to help you form your own self-identity. It's a whole developmental thing too, but um Oh my gosh, that's what I would mm. say. Don't yeah. sweat it, sister. Don't sweat <laughs> Love it, sister. Love that's it. perfect. I would say just go have fun. Like, don't really, don't care about, like, don't really care about who's watching you um, and what they're saying. Um, but just, just to have fun. I know it seems so basic, but I think, I think knowing my younger self, I would have been like, okay, I'm that you're kind of cool as an older person. You got this. <laughs> I would say you are enough. Mm -hmm. I would say you got this. Yeah, those two things. You know, this is uh, this is a question that um, threw me in therapy (laughs) uh, (laughs) for a while, and I didn't want to answer it for a very long time. Um, I think um, I think the thing I would say is uh, like ultimately. I would tell me that you're pretty rad and the more time you worry about what others are thinking, um, the more you're going to worry that you're not rad. Mm. And the more times you start following your passions and, you know, trusting your instincts, uh, your life will be um, more rewarding. Um, And like, you know, just like, it's not always going to be easy, but It doesn't mean you have to pretend it's always hard. You can, you know, like, uh, it will also also be amazing. The advice is, is ride the wave. It's going to work out. And let go of expectations. Mm. 
embrace the newness mm. and um, just be kind to yourself. So I would say that all the challenges that you're going to face are going to make you the strong person you are in the future. And like, yes, it was, I had a really hard time with my anxiety, but I am grateful for every experience it took me to because I'm, I'm now such a strong person because of it. And it's made me very mature and I'm able to help other people now from it. So I would say, be grateful for your struggles. I would tell her um, that, that it's okay. And to, to be patient and to continue following her heart because Mm -hmm. I would tell her, I know you feel alone and I want you to know it's going to get better because there are a lot of people that feel like you do and you're going to meet people that understand you as, you know, as time goes on, you're going to meet more and more people that understand you and stay listening to yourself you are doing an amazing job. Stay, listen to yourself and continue doing what you're doing. It's going to get better and you're going to find your community and you're going to be so happy that you didn't compromise yourself to be who you think you should have been. Mm. Stay on that path. Yeah. I always, it's hard for me not when I think about this question, because I've been asked it before. um, And it's hard for me not to get emotional thinking about this, but you know, first I would give her a hug and Mm my biggest piece of advice is just to tell her that you're not broken and um, you know, you are, you are going to be able to use your voice to, to um, shed light and help people not and help other help children not feel the way that you felt. I just want to love on him and Hmm. just thank him and, and say, keep going. You're on, you're on it. You're on the right path. Uh, And maybe I, I guess I started my past seven years ago. So it feels like my started my path. I always, for me, it's very black and white. So I always talk yeah. like I had this previous life and I had this new life. And because that's how it is in myself, it felt like a rebirthing in many ways. Yeah. And so um, uh, I would just say, keep going. You're going to figure it out. To watch your thoughts and know that you have the power to change them. Yeah. Um, you have the power to change your thoughts and you're probably teenage Lauren, like you're more than your body, you know, so much more. Um, so those things, I think about the thoughts though, cause that was just really kind of transformative for yeah. me. Yeah. You yeah. know, knowing that I had that power to kind of like, like the witness, like the observer to like step out and be like, Oh, you're in an anxiety loop. How can we stop that? What can we do? Or can we just notice it? And is that sometimes enough, you know? I- to say like, oh God, you're spinning right now on that hamster wheel and not, and to be, I mean, something that I'm working on now is to just be, I'm very hard on myself. Mm -hmm. So like, just to be more gentle on myself and like, yeah, you're having a day. It's okay. Like it'll pass. Yeah. I think you have to. Right. It's, it's such a game changer when you realize that not all your thoughts are true. Right. It's like, it's that, oh wait, all this time I've been telling myself I'm not good enough and I'm Mm -hmm. not perfect. And I'm there's all these things wrong with me and wait, a minute, <coughs> that's not true. Right. <laughs> then what yeah. could be true? Yeah. Right. The potential, you know? So yes. I, I agree completely. That's probably what I would tell myself. Like, mm. you know, your thoughts, um, you you, you can control them. You are in charge. You know, the mind, I think this was an, I love Wayne Dyer. I think he said the mind can be slippery, you know, mm. and I love that the mind can be very slippery. Yeah. Um, so. I like that. Yeah. Slippery is such a visual word. Yeah. Yeah. With kids, sometimes I'll tell them like meditation, we want to smooth the mind, you know, we want to make yeah. the mind smooth and like, instead of slippery where it's like going all over the place. Right. And it's hard to catch <laughs> when it's right, slippery, right. it's going to slip through your fingers. Like it's, right. it's just, yeah. you think about something slippery, it's all over. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, they provide so many visuals. Trust yourself. Mm. Believe in yourself love yourself unconditionally Mm. the love that you give to everybody else I never had a problem loving other people the problem was loving myself I just got a full body (laughs) yeah me too (laughs) for real (laughs) so I would just tell her you know 
you got this. You can do all the things that you want to do. You know, I think everybody's journey is their journey and it takes some of us a little bit longer, you know, but I'm so thankful for every single thing that I've gone through in my life because it has made the human being that I am today. And I love the human being that I am today. (laughs) So do I am madly in love with her. (laughs) You just communicated that's just so beautifully. And it's true. It's, it's clear that you embody those sentiments. Right. Right. Like the advice you would give is what you embody now is that self-love is that ability to trust yourself. And, you know, I think a lot of people, our listeners and non-listeners out there can relate to wishing they love themselves, wishing they could trust themselves, but not even knowing if it's possible. And you're, you're saying like the advice is possible. And now it is time for lightning round. All right. I mean, I I can barely contain my excitement because (laughs) this is by far the best part of every interview for me personally that we have done. Yes, we've heard people's anxiety journeys. Yes, we've heard some incredible, inspiring, wonderful, interesting unique stories about people's anxiety journeys. And I love every moment of that too, but nothing makes me more excited than when we dive into lightning round. And it's twofold because I get excited to ask my questions, Mm -hmm. but I'm also equally excited to hear what you have come up with. (laughs) We don't don't know each other's lightning rounds for our guests. We always get to surprise each other a little bit too. And once in a while, it's spawned into one of us, if not both of us, changing our next question mm-hmm. for the guest so we can follow up with something that either one of us had just asked. Yep. So this idea um, had come about like just a few months before we started podcasting, actually, um, on my personal or on my, I should say my work Instagram account. I was um, inspired to start talking to my community. And so I would invite people or people reach out to me to join me live on Instagram live. And I would just get to know them a little bit. We would chat kind of like a very informal podcasting yes. style via IG live. And at the end of our chat, I would always um, end with lightning round questions. And I got this idea from inside the actor's studio with James Lipton. This is again, aging me quite a bit. But if anyone <laughs> out there knows it, I mean, you know, it's the best, one of the best shows ever. I just love the way he would interview the, uh, the incredible A-list celebrities and incredible actors that he would have on his show on, I believe it was A&E. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would ask the same questions every week though. And it was like, what's your favorite word? Um, what do you want to say to God when, if, when you cross the pearly gates yeah. or what do you hope, you know, he fixed you know, whatever air quotes, he says to you, um, your least favorite word, your favorite sound, your least favorite sound. And so some of the questions I had asked were, um, reminiscent of those questions. And then I threw in my own little flavor. And so when you and I connected to decide to launch into this podcast, again, lo- knowing not anything about what we were doing and nope, <laughs> but we were like, all right, this is kind of a heavy topic, right? Anxiety mm-hmm. can feel like a weighty, heavy, topic. It certainly feels weighty and heavy in our lived experience sometimes. And so we wanted to find a way to bring our um, silly, playful selves to the podcast as well. And also give our guests and certainly our listeners an opportunity to just laugh and be silly and really present. Yes. So this segment just means the world to me. I love it. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I look forward to lightning round every, every time we have a guest. Um, I look forward to asking my questions and hearing their responses. And I look forward to hearing your (laughs) questions. I mean, sometimes when I'm creating questions, I think like, what will crack Margot up? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, Oh my gosh. And almost all of them do. (laughs) And I mean, it started in the, in the like, You know, at at first for me, it was like getting to know each other, getting to know our guests more. But when you and I had our first episode where we did it with each other and I asked you to make the sound of um, eating soup that was too hot and just like how we just (laughs) couldn't stop laughing from that. I was like, I always have to throw in one of those with our guests, you know, and so um, we definitely have asked our guests to sing, um, and make silly noises and, and, um, it's just been really fun and playful 
Um, but we also have asked our guests like nice things, like what makes them smile? Like, (laughs) (laughs) right. What are they grateful for? (laughs) You know, we give, we throw some softballs at them sometimes, or, you know what, maybe they're not softballs, who knows, but yeah. Right. Yeah. You never know who's going to want what. So it's just been fun. Yeah. To see how they like receive it. Um, and we've been surprised before too. I know that you know, that you have sort of an idea of, all right, I'm getting the vibe from this particular person we're chatting with that they're really down to play or that they're probably maybe a little bit more reserved or a little bit more shy or timid. And so, but I have been so blown away by some of the responses mm-hmm. too, and how willing everyone has been so far, at least so far, not what it continues <laughs> that way to just yeah. like play with us and be game. Right. Right. It's an act of bravery to be silly. Right. And especially after sharing something vulnerable, like an anxiety story, like it's awesome that all our guests are willing to do that with us. And so it's just been really fun. And for me, I feel I feel connected through stories for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also feel connected through play. And I feel like putting that together, the stories and the play, I really feel like very connected to our guests. Yes, yes, yes to all of that. So enjoy some random yes. light, <laughs> lightning round questions. It's going to be all over the place, folks. So strap in. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> what is something that makes you smile? Oh, just waking up in the morning. That makes me smile. If I open my eyes and I can wiggle my toes, I'm oh, smiling. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, and I'm, Way to go for making me sound bad, Abby. I'm like, <laughs> I was like trashing your questions. You're like, let me smile. I'm not- <laughs> if we were all in a zombie apocalypse, what role would you play? Would you be the zombie slayer? Would you be the strategist, the caretaker, getting the food? What would be your role? I'm going to say the caretaker <laughs> because that's just, that's been my role for a lifetime. <laughs> A mom of four. Yeah, that makes sense. Mom of four and middle sibling. So, you know, I also Mm -hmm. do that with my siblings. So, yeah, I would say caretaker. I'm going to say the same thing. That's why I say that. Can I? I would be dead person. (laughs) I probably wouldn't make it more than 24 hours. (laughs) I would, I'd be like, Margo, get on the kayak with me. (laughs) Nope. Nope. Abby knows uh, no kayaks, no, no roughing it, no tumbling. Nope. 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 Oh my gosh. I love it. (laughs) No, too funny. I guess if I, well, what what about you, Abby? What would you do? I mean, what would I want to do and what would I most likely do? I mean, I'd love to be the slayer. Yeah, same. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, And gross and disgusting. I mean, also, you know, but I feel like strategist feels good. Yeah. Right? Like to strategize where to go. Like my overthinking brain would think Mm -hmm. of all the different things. So that's where I feel like I'd be at home at. Okay. I, I, I would agree with that assessment of yourself. Thanks. (laughs) Yeah. And then caretaker, right? That's like third on the list. Yeah. Yes. Right. I feel Someone like else I would get be, the food. you know, I'm not, well, well that sounds, no, no. I just want to eat the food. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get the food. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're getting way off topic. So what is your all-time favorite movie? And can you give us any quotes from it? Ace Ventura, Pet Detective all day. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite line? Well, Filet them and fast food them is a line that we say in this house like <laughs> all day, every day. I don't know why, but we do. Um, Mr. Shikadance is a recurring character in this house. Um, Pinkle is Einhorn. Einhorn. Is- <laughs> Classic. I mean, all of these things happen all the time. I mean, they're things that we say. Yeah. So good. Oh my yeah, gosh. I mean, that's like my movie. What is your favorite? sound I mean honestly like the sound of a brown paper bag being crumpled is like (laughs) lovely I've I've actually always been obsessed with sounds as a kid like I would just like crumple my lunch bag or whatever Mm. Uh, maybe I was a weird kid but like (laughs) I was like oh it sounds so great Mm. like I don't know what it was I've never gone to music (laughs) (laughs) just rumpled just rumpling bags yeah (laughs) Yeah, just just rumpling bags. So What's your favorite song? I love rumpling brown paper bags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
make the sound of kicking the kickball. No, 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 no. I feel like it starts with a P. No. <laughs> that was good. I love it. Oh my God, that, was that was really, really good. good. <laughs> that was legit. I could, yes. I could see the kickball yes. when you made that sound. That was I can, like run up to it in my brain. Yes. That was amazing. I, amazing. What is your favorite animal sound? <laughs> oh, the owls. That sounds like it's like who cooks for you, but it's like who, cooks, who? <laughs> like who cooks for you. Do your best impression of a lion. <laughs> so this is perfect. So I, I'm a Leo. <gasps> this is Yay! My Did birthday. You just have your birthday? When's your birthday? Next Tuesday. <gasps> So I am a lion by nature. <laughs> so, so excited. I see a lion impersonation. Because see, I have the claws and the fierce eyes and just. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, let's hear it again. Let's hear it again. Brr, brr. I'm a you know, soft lioness. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's it. Lioness. <laughs> Love it. Make the sound <laughs> of when you're entering a room with high heels and it could be the sound of high heels or it could be like, you know, when someone enters a room and it's like, oh, like <laughs> what would the sound be of you entering the room with high heels on? Okay, so start with like, and then people will go, and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's me, it's me. It's me. Yeah. And then it'll like, and then it'll just keep going off and people will be like, damn. damn. Just like that power force, but positive power force. We want all positivity. I Love am it. obsessed with this answer. <laughs> yeah. This is the perfect answer. If you were a sound, what sound would you be? And could you make it? I think that. If you woke up tomorrow as a mm. mythical creature, mm. any, any, it could be like a unicorn, a mermaid, a centaur, Pegasus, like whatever. There's no right or wrong here. Yeah. Um, what would you be? Mm. And what is the sound that you would make as this creature? Oh, gee. I knew you were going to ask the sound. I'm like, oh, that was the that's... first part of the question. And here comes <laughs> the second part. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, 100% a unicorn. A hundred percent a unicorn, and it would be like, doo -doo -doo -doo, like the, <laughs> the sound, like the, doo -doo, like you know. The <laughs> we know that you are an equal office nerd. Oh yeah, we are. Oh, you love okay. your MGS, Michael Gary Scott, well, Michael Gary, Michael Gary, and you have a beautiful singing voice. Oh god! So oh. I want you to sing any line or the whole song. Uh, that Hunter, that's from Hunter's album in Dinner Party. Oh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's Babe, it's the, it's Dinner Party. Babe, it's one of my babe. Yes. You took me by the hand <laughs> and made me a man. Yeah. <laughs> that one night, one night, made everything all right. Right. <laughs> yep, yep, Woo! Yep, yep, yep. Favorite TV theme song growing up and then sing it. Sing oh. it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Um, okay. I have it in my head and I'm blanking on how it starts. What's the TV show? Maybe we can help. Yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. In West Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I was oh. born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. <laughs> Chilling out back and relaxing all cool and all shooting some b-ball outside of school when a couple of guys that were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. She said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle to Bel Air. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite Spice Girl song and can you oh. sing a couple lines? <laughs> okay. So, so much emotion and depth in those Spice Girls. <laughs> wait, just you oh, wait. <laughs> okay. For sure. For sure. No, there uh, is. Look, I, I know what the Spice Girls are and I love it. <laughs> Me too. Uh, right, I'm so, here for uh, it. Uh, everyone goes for Zigga Zigga, you know, <laughs> right? Everyone just, that's where they go. 
But I think the best song is When Two Become One. Yes. Oh, my God. Right? Uh, okay. So this, I'll give you a little bit of this. Uh, I feel like on the spot, let's see how many lyrics I remember. Uh, okay. Because tonight is the night when two become one. I need some love like I never needed love before. Gonna make love to you, baby. Need a little love. Now I'm back for more. Gonna make love to you, baby. Let your spirit free. It's the only way to be. Is the night when two become one. Oh, yeah. Woo! You got it. You got it. That was so beautiful. Oh, I love it. Sing us one line from your go-to song that you sing in the shower or in the car. Oh my gosh. I mean, it can be more than one line. Yeah, it could be at least one yeah. line. Make I don't want to this. I don't want to <laughs> limit you just to one line. All right, hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm a girl, a girl who has everything? Look at this trove, <laughs> treasures untold. How many wonders can one cavern hold? That is the best song ever. I'm very <laughs> impressed. Thank you. <laughs> yes, twinkle. so many twinkles. We have lots of Disney love. Yeah, love right Disney. Now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, what was your first concert ever? And will you maybe sing a part of your favorite song from that? Yes. Um, okay. It was Backstreet Boys, guys. This was a big deal. This was a bit. Were you in sync, people? I could see it by your I faces. Am. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> but fair enough. I know. Fair enough. Listen, it's, okay. I'm, I'm, it's all love here. I yeah. am sort of over it. Okay. Let's hear it. Um, and so this song changed my life. I was. So quit playing games. Um, the video came mm. out. I'm not sure if anyone remembers that video. Yeah. Oh, um, close. but it involved water, shirtless men, like <laughs> body rolling. I, it, like looking back. <laughs> so this was like, I don't know, I was probably 11 or something. And I just remember watching and being like, something's happening to me <laughs> while I'm watching this. <laughs> like, I remember like like six pack, like, you know, and yep. so a lot was happening. Um, so that's quit playing games. So that song to me is like, you know, life changing. Do you guys know that Let's one? Let's hear it. Quit we know playing. it. Yeah, we got this. With Wait, but we need to hear you. games with my heart, with my heart, <laughs> with my heart. I should have known from the start with my heart. They're dancing, by the way, guys. If you can't yeah. with my heart. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Sinking along. <laughs> Yes! Baby, baby. If you were a sound, what sound would you be and then make the sound? So good. <laughs> so good. Wow. I gotta, I gotta connect right now, like the essence of Lou. Yeah. The sound of Lou. Oh. Smokes, that was bananas. <laughs> I love it. Bananas. That's the well sound. Done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Whoo! Holy cannoli, guacamole! <laughs> it was so fun listening to some of those juicy oh. lightning round questions. Great yes. choices, Abby. Great. Yes. Choices. <laughs> <laughs> they make my heart happy. <laughs> so so good. Um. Oh, it was just so joyful for us to have this episode be our last one of 2021. Yeah. It's been a wild couple of years. This podcasting journey has been wild so far and mm -hmm. we are just super stoked and really, really hopeful for the future of anxiety warriors podcast. Yeah. 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 This has just been, you know, quite a journey that in, you know, some ways we can thank the pandemic for, right. Mm -hmm. Um, Good things can come from bad things. Um, and, and I'm just really, you know, curious to see how this continues to unfold and, and the community we connect to and um, the new guests that we meet, because this has just been, it's been, it's been really meaningful and it's been fun. 
Yes, it really has. And um, I know one of my hopes for this coming year is that we have even more people join our Instagram family um, that find the show. Uh, I love hearing the stories of like, Hey, I told, you know, my coworker about your show because I listened to that one episode and I really loved it. And it really sat with me. And I thought that this person I know would yeah. gain something from it. And so, um, one of my hopes, or I, I shouldn't say intentions, but one of my hopes for this coming year of, um, making new episodes is to, of course, be able to chat with new, amazing warriors who have unique and important stories to share and whose voices deserve to be heard. Uh, but also I just would love to hear more stories like that, that like, it's, it's sort of that spider web, right? It's Mm -hmm. like one part leads to the next part leads to the next part. And, uh, hopefully it just keeps growing and getting bigger so we can keep growing and getting bigger. Yeah. Our web can expand. All right, warriors. We love you so much. We're so grateful you're here this and every week. Thank you for being with us this whole year. Can't wait to see you again in 2022. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you. Reach out. You can email us at anxietywarriorspodcast at gmail.com. You can connect with us over on Instagram. We're at anxiety warriors podcast. Let us know your wins of the week. Uh, what kind of topic ideas you're looking for us to explore in this next chapter. Uh, this next year of the podcast journey. And if you are interested in being a guest on our show, you can drop us a line too. We'd love to hear from you and connect and learn more about your story. Yes. Yes. So thank you all so much for going on this journey with us. Uh, We're both wishing you a very peaceful new year. Till next time.